Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Let's try another one. Let's try the 2015 one. So differentiate x minus root x plus 6 with respect to x, that's part b, and find the coordinates of the turning point of the function. Now, you may or may not know what turning points is, but I, we'll get to that. But just in case anyone is struggling, I'll just start you off. And if you're okay, keep going. Okay, so if we have a look at this one, keep going if you're not finished. So dy dx in this one equals, if I differentiate x, it becomes one. And then if I differentiate this beast, okay, it is a chain where its main function I'm going to use, take down the power, reduce the power by one rule. So take down the half. Okay, that's my n coming down in front. That's where that half came out of because the square root is written as a half. Open my bracket, x plus six, and then it's a half minus one. Okay, so as you can see, I'm more or less, I don't touch what's inside while I'm using this rule. Okay, and that's the nature of a chain function. Okay, but I must multiply it by the inner function differentiated. So if I differentiate x plus six, I just get one. So it's one minus a half x plus six to the power of minus a half. Okay, now it takes a bit of practice to write this as reciprocal and be comfortable with it. Um, I find it easier if it's a fraction to use two lines rather than squish it up because then I can see that that's the half. Okay, x plus six to the power of a minus Okay, that minus is going to put it underneath the line. So I have one over x plus six to the power of a half. Okay, one minus. Now when you're multiplying fractions, it's always top by top, bottom by bottom. That's how you multiply fractions. Okay, so in that vein, one by one on the top, and then the bottom is two times. Now I'm not gonna write this as x plus six to the power of a half. I'm going to go backwards and write it with the square root. They gave it to me in square root. I'm gonna give it back to them in square root. Okay, so that's what I'm getting for the full answer for uh, f dash x, dy dx, whatever you want to call it. One minus one over two square root of x plus six. So anyone that got that, well done. Okay, now turning points. So so what is a turning point even? And again, sometimes I think when you have a visual, it can help a little bit. Okay, so if I have a curve, okay, and it doesn't matter what the curve is, um, that point there is what's called a turning point. In other words, the graph turns from having a positive slope to a negative slope in this case, or if anybody understands lenses or anything, it goes from concave to convex, if that makes sense to you. And we have another turning point over here. Okay, typical turning points are max, which would be that one, a min turning point, which is that one, and a point of inflection. Okay, so the theory on turning points is um, basically uh, for turning points, let's change back color, for turning points, dy dx equals zero. Okay, so that will find, that will help you find your turning points.
It won't tell you what type of a turning point it is. For that, we need d2y dx squared, so the second derivative. Um, but it will tell you where your turning points lie. So what you do is you basically take what you just found for um, dy dx and you let it equal to zero. And what you do then is you solve for x. Okay, and in that way, you will find your um, x coordinate of your turning point. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring the one over so that I get minus one over two root x plus six being equal to minus one. I'm going to change the signs all the way across. And then I'm going to multiply across by two root x plus six. Okay, to get rid of that fraction on the bottom. Okay, uh, let me see what I'll do then. I'll divide both sides by two so that I get a square root of x plus six equals a half. I will then square both sides to get rid of the square root sign so that I get x plus six being equal to a quarter. And then I will bring over the six so that I get minus six plus a quarter. So minus five and three quarters. And you're not a bit surprised or you won't be a bit surprised by the time you get used to uh, leaving cert exam questions that that's not a round number, it's um, a fractiony number and you will be forgiven for thinking that you'd made a mistake if you got that as an answer. But expect the unexpected. Okay, that's the X coordinate. I was told to find the coordinates which is x comma y, okay? So don't sub into dy dx because that gives you slope, okay? So it's not dy dx you sub into, we want our y coordinate, so we sub into the original. So always sub into original, because that's y equals, I hope that makes sense, uh, to find y. Okay, so y is equal to x minus root x plus six. Uh, it's equal to minus five and three quarters. Minus root minus five and three quarters. Plus six. Uh, put that into the calculator is what I would do with that now rather than try to work it out in bits. And I am going to get minus six and a quarter. Okay, so that's my y coordinate. So my full answer then is your turning point is x comma y. Okay, if you feel you've gone wrong in the question and you can't find it, um, don't stop what you're doing, proceed, um, proceed all the way down. So in other words, find your dy dx, okay? Uh, let it equal to zero and, and, and include this bit of theory here, okay? By including the little bits of theory, you are telling the corrector of your lead insert that you understand the question, okay? You mightn't have it perfectly worked out, but at least you understand the theory that's been asked in the question, okay? So work your way down, find a value for X and proceed then to sub it into the original to find your Y. And you know what? You'll get a good chunk of the marks um, for the understanding rather than the answer. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.